Find out what these bottles, this tower, and this 1920s band all have in common on this episode of Antique Bottle Stories. The Clico Club Company was one of the largest national beverage companies in the early 1900s. Millis, Massachusetts was founded in 1885 by this guy, Lansing Millis. He built up a strong railroad system in this town, among other things. But this story's not about him. Although I do want to mention that there is currently a road in this town called Lansing Way and a road named Henry Way after his son. So the Clico story starts with his son, Henry Millis. One day, Henry made a suggestion to a guy named Charles LaCroix of the LaCroix Fruit Farm, who was already making and bottling sparkling cider. My first thought was that he had something to do with this company, but nope, he doesn't. Anyways, Millis told LaCroix that he should call his sparkling cider Clico, after the famous French champagne Veuve Clico, which apparently you can still buy. So Lansing Millis gave some money, and Henry LaCroix and Henry Millis founded Clico Club Company. The company mainly produced sparkling cider for the first few years, but the sparkling cider was soon dropped, and the company began focusing on ginger ale. The company only hired people from the town of Millis. Millis' philosophy was to make the drinks as though he were making them for his own friends. He imported high quality exotic ingredients such as Jamaican ginger and Cuban pure refined sugar. These two were the key ingredients to his ginger ale, making the company stand out in this field. Clico Club was Canada Dry's main rival. Even though word of his soda spread over the New England area, in the next few years, the cost of such fine ingredients eventually forced Henry Millis to sell the company in 1901. The new proprietors, Horace A. Kimball and his son, really had a knack for advertising and came up with the Eskimo boy mascot named Clico. Here are two of my bottles, either from the 20s or 30s. One has a mascot and one does not. So Kimball, with his knack for advertising, had an animated sign in Manhattan Times Square, which was the largest animated sign in the world from 1924 to 1926. He also came up with a musical variety radio program, the Clico Club Eskimos, led by banjo player Harry F. Reeser. Clico Club Eskimos recorded 25 sessions of records from 1925 to 1931. And any time they performed, they kept their Eskimo theme. Here's a clip called Sundown from 1927. Every little breeze is sighing of love undying at sundown. Every little bird is resting and feather nesting at sundown. Each little rosebud is sleeping while shadows are creeping. In a little cottage cozy, the world seems rosy at sundown. You can find a lot of their songs on YouTube. I've added a link to their channel for the full playlist. Such clever marketing expanded the company until the factory in Millis became one-third of a mile long and even had its own private train station. The area around this massive factory became known as Millis Clico, Massachusetts. The area is still called that today. In 1893, Clico Club pioneered the first metal cap on a bottle, and in 1934 was the first company to sell quart bottles, And in 1938, the company became the first to sell its beverages in a can called a cone top, which looked like this. It was easier to manufacture. Other companies noticed and did it too. In the 1960s, the company began to decline in sales worldwide thanks to other soft drinks that became more popular. It was purchased in 1969 by the Cop Beverage Corporation of Connecticut. The Cop Corporation eventually sold off all product surplus before shutting down Clico in 1980. 
Today, the original plant in Millis still stands, although remains mostly abandoned. But the tower still stands to remind the residents that this used to be a huge presence in this town. Part of the building is occupied by Ann Hope Bath Store. Hope you enjoyed this Cleco Bottles history. See you next time. Thanks for watching.